How about that for an intro? It's pretty good, huh? Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Steven and I am a first year dental student. I'm sort of rapidly approaching the end of my first year of dental school, which is actually kind of insane to think about. But in the spirit of this and in the spirit of getting close to moving on to my D2 year, I wanted to address all of you who are about to enter dental school as D1s. But before I get going, if you enjoy this video, let me know in the comments and make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to see everything that I'm doing here on the channel as I finish up with my first year of dental school and move into my second. So being in dental school for almost an entire year has taught me a lot of things about both dental school and also myself as a student and just how I approach things, how I deal with things. So in this video, I wanna very informally give you some words of wisdom, some pieces of advice, just some things that I've learned that, that might actually help you with your transition from undergrad into dental school. I know there are a ton of you that are about to start dental school in like July and August coming up. So if you're in that boat, congratulations, that's extremely exciting. And if you're still waiting, if you're still going through the process or you're earlier on, do not fret. I promise your time will come and time honestly flies. It's, it's one of the things that I've learned in my life. So you will be in school in no time, I promise. But to all of you who are about to start, here are some things that I think are important to know before you begin. The first thing that I wanna discuss is getting ahead. So when you start dental school, and, and I, don't, I can't guarantee this because I've only been to one dental school as a student, but when you start dental school, they're not going to start you out and absolutely just throw tons and tons and tons of work on you you might actually have what I had, which was sort of a ramp into the difficulty. We started out with pretty much an undergrad level amount of material, and it was like that for probably a month. Once lab work started, it started to ramp up a little bit as far as our responsibilities were concerned, but there definitely was a time period in which I had a lot of free time in, in the beginning of my first semester of dental school. So there are two things that I wanna encourage you to do with this free time. And the first is to get ahead. So getting ahead is always really important if you can do it. Go ahead and check out all of the lectures that are coming up in some of your more difficult classes. Go ahead and make your Anki cards, take your notes, do whatever you're gonna do for those. And that way, once, you, once the work starts to actually build up, you're actually ahead a little bit and you don't have to worry about falling behind or not having enough time to spend the amount of time that you need to on each lecture. This is something that I did a little bit in the beginning and it definitely helps me as I moved into the rest of my first semester. It's something I wish I had done more this semester in my second semester, but we had a ton more work to do and I was not able to do that. So I actually fell behind a little bit. So get ahead, I promise it will help you when it comes to both lecture work and lab work. The next thing that I wanna encourage you to do with all of this free time is get to know your dental class. Now, I think this is extremely important. You're about to spend four years with this group of 70 to 150 people, however many people it is. And I think it's really important that you actually take the effort, you go out, you put yourself out there and you meet all the people in your class because it's probably gonna be the first time in your life when you have so much in common with such a large group of people. When we're an undergrad, we kind of meet a lot of different people. We meet people who are like us and we meet people who are completely different. They're on completely different life paths and we don't necessarily have a whole lot in common with them. And what this leads to in college is actually, you might find yourself meeting a lot of people that you don't necessarily like, you don't necessarily agree with some of the things they do, the way they live their lives, or you just don't find a whole lot that you have in common with these people. But at least in my experience in dental school, pretty much everybody I've met has been really, really awesome. And I immediately have a built-in conversation with 
any and everybody that I meet in my class because we're all in this very niche portion of our lives where we're studying something that not a whole heck of a lot of people study and we're all in the same position on that journey. So please use up some of that time to get to know some of your classmates, do the fun things that you can do. Hopefully COVID continues to relax a little bit and some of the regulations on, on going out to restaurants and bars and things are lifted and you're able to have fun because the beginning of dental school is actually a really rich time of your life if you're able to to go out and have some fun unfortunately my class wasn't able to do a whole lot of that which which kind of sucks but we've we've been trying to slowly make up for it as time has gone on okay so i've kind of covered two major aspects of dental school so far there's the lecture aspect you're sitting in your classroom you're learning your lecture material and you're taking your exams there's that there's also the social aspect of being in school but one really unique and a pretty awesome thing about dental school is actually your lab work, your hands on things that you're doing in order to develop your hand skills and become a dentist. And with respect to lab, I've talked about this in the past in some of my videos, but I will tell you right now, there's going to be a learning curve. Now, certain people go right into their first year dental school labs and they just absolutely kill it and everything. They really just have sort of a natural inclination to doing this type of work but most of us don't necessarily have that and it's going to take us time to, to get to that point where everything feels at least somewhat easy. So if you're like me in any way, you're going to have a learning curve when it comes to your lab work and I encourage you to just power through this and understand that your hand skills will continue to get better as you move through time. And to give you a little bit more of a concrete example of this, when I started out last semester with a hand piece in my hand and I started out with our basic cavity preparations, I could do a class one cavity prep in like maybe two, two ish hours. Now it probably would take me about 10 minutes. That is just not even a full year of having a hand piece in my hand and putting in some extra time. Now, once, once you get to class twos and you start cutting proximal boxes and, and of course go up into the maxilla, things are going to get a little bit more difficult. But the point is, as you move on and as you continue to put in time, you're going to find that your hand skills will really start to improve and they'll start to catch up for you. I think this is important because it's very easy to get frustrated with, with the lab work and especially once the lab work ramps up and you have a lot of it to do and you have this big check off sheet of, of items that you need to get done, you may find yourself pretty stressed. So I'm gonna encourage you to do two things. One, keep your head down, understand that you're going to get better at this thing with time. And two, which is similar to the first thing that I talked about in this video, make sure that you're using your time wisely in lab. You're gonna have a good bit of time to be in lab and make sure that you're using it all. Sometimes you'll have this point where you could go home if you wanted to and you'll you'll feel yourself talking yourself into going home. You'll say, oh, I, I need to study. I'll just go home and study but try to stay in lab for a little bit longer and get an extra prep done, do a little bit of extra waxing, whatever it is, just get it done. And I promise it will help you in the long run, especially for when the, the schoolwork actually does get pretty insane, it gets all stacked up on you, you won't have to worry as much about the lab section of your curriculum. The last thing that I wanna talk about in this video is to start considering your future as a dentist. There are some people who have their futures as a dentist set. They know where they're gonna practice, they know where they're gonna go, but there are also a lot of people who have absolutely no idea. And there are people in my class who I've talked to that are in this boat where they really don't know where they're gonna end up practicing. They don't know what city, they don't know if they're gonna be a general dentist or they're gonna specialize. So your first year is a really good time to start to maybe understand a little bit more about your track. The first thing of course is to keep your grades up if you do ever want to specialize. I think a lot of people kind of go in this route and just make sure that they keep their grades really high so that they have viable options for specialization, but also just make sure that you keep your eyes and ears open when it comes to meeting people around campus. I firmly believe that meeting a influential teacher or an older dental student at your school could actually affect your career path as a dentist because you just never know what those people are going to do for your personal path and your career. When we were in our gross anatomy lab, we actually had a first year OMFS resident who was in our lab with us. If you don't know, that's oral surgery essentially. 
uh, the long abbreviation for oral surgery. And he was in there with us and I got to talking to him quite a bit. He was an awesome guy and I could very easily see myself getting interested in oral surgery because of him. Now, I don't plan to do that. That's not necessarily my career path, but if I was, you know, if I did have my options open, talking with him and hearing his story about how he got to oral surgery would have had a big influence on me. So keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and make sure you're taking every opportunity to talk to some of your more experienced professors and some of the older students that will be floating around in your labs. And those are the things that really might have a big influence on your future. Guys, the first year of dental school is scary in a lot of ways. It's a big adjustment period for a lot of people, but at the same time, it's a really, really awesome period of your life. And it's the first time in your life when you finally realize that you are learning your profession, you're learning your career, and this is the thing that you're gonna do for the rest of your life, which is pretty, pretty awesome. I want you to know that I have been through almost all of it now, and I have a lot of thoughts about all of these things. So if you're ever concerned or you ever have a question, make sure that you reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. A lot of people message me there and ask me questions, but you can also leave comments on my YouTube videos. I pretty much respond to every single comment I get. I don't think I, I ever leave any comments unresponded to. And just ask me a question, tell me what your concern is, and I will try to address either you specifically or I'll try to address it in a video. And before you leave, for all of those faithful people who are still watching, I wanna plug something really quickly. The most recent video that I released on my channel was actually a podcast episode. I do have a podcast and I just released episode four of this podcast. It's called The Teeth Time Podcast. And in the last episode, I talked with Jack Han, who is an amazing dental student YouTuber. And I want to just encourage you all to go over and watch that video because we had a great time making it. And it's a great discussion for pre-dental students, but also dental students like me and Jack who are interested in kind of taking the next steps in their career and, and just trying to make the best of, of every day. I truly appreciate every single one of you. I cannot stress this enough. You guys are amazing. You have, have given me this wonderful opportunity to make YouTube videos and to grow this channel. Uh, there is growth every single day and I just appreciate it so, so much. You guys are not a number to me at all. You are in fact a community that I really appreciate and I'm still kind of shocked that people enjoy what I'm putting out. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And as always, I will see you in the next video.